President Obama has a message for Iraq. American firepower can't hold your country together. He says only a new government, one that unifies Iraqis, can push back the terrorists. And those fighters are now sweeping toward Baghdad with breathtaking speed, gobbling up more towns and villages over the weekend. In the capital today, the American Secretary of State, John Kerry, drives home a sense of urgency. He sat down with the embattled Prime Minister, Nuri al-Maliki. He also sat down with Sunni and Shiite leaders. So there's a lot to dissect here. Let's turn to our panel of experts. Retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurdling is a former commander of U.S. troops in northern Iraq. Tara Mahler is a research fellow in the International Security Program at the America Foundation. And David Gergen is CNN senior political analyst and a former advisor to four U.S. presidents. Welcome to all of you. Thank you, Carol. Thank okay. you. Thank you for being here. Um, so, Tara, I want to start with you. Secretary of State John Kerry is expected to hold a news conference any moment now out of Baghdad. He sat down with the Prime Minister earlier today. What do you suppose he said? Well, I think what John Kerry is trying to do is to diplomatically engage with the Iraqis, both Sunni Iraqi leadership and Shia. He needs to put pressure on Maliki to try to force Maliki to unify the country. It is a sense of urgency that the country is feeling, and without a unified government with Maliki making some overtures to the Sunnis, he's going to see his political days numbered as the uh, jockeying for power continues in Baghdad in the next few days and weeks. But David, though, the United States is in a strange place. I mean, Nuri al-Maliki was democratically elected, and we're kind of pushing for regime change, aren't we? Uh, absolutely, and I think the chances of getting there are quite remote. Uh, the more we push publicly, by the way, I think the less likely it is uh, to happen. Once you channel somebody's manhood in politics, uh, they tend to go the other way. They want to resist you to show that they're a strong, independent, sovereign nation. So I think more of this diplomacy to conducted behind closed doors might be helpful. Um, General Hurtling, four more Iraqi cities uh, fell to ISIS. It seems like they're, they're surrounding Baghdad to choke it off. How long will it be before these terrorists get into Baghdad? How long do we have to use intelligence and diplomacy to solve this problem? Well, I think you've seen early on, Carol, that in the West and the North, it's a tribal society. So you had tribal sheikh support for even when we were recru recruiting soldiers for the various army divisions. You won't have the same kind of implications within Baghdad. I think you're going to see some stronger fightings. Uh, you have the Iraqi uh, Special Operations Forces, ISOF as we call them. You have commando units there. So there is the potential to, to create a better defense of Baghdad. But in the north and the west, those cities fell because I think the Sunni tribal leaders gave in to ISIS and told their young men to, to withdraw from the army. It's just, it's astounding to me how the Iraqis just said, well, we're not going to fight because our government's not listening to us, so we're going to let these terrorists take over. <laughs> Well, it's actually not as surprising it might seem. I mean, it did catch the Iraqi government and the U.S. off guard. But we saw these problems back in 2004 to 2006 period. That's when I worked on Iraq as a military analyst. We saw that Iraqi security forces, there were problems in terms of morale, defections. If people aren't getting paid, they're not going to necessarily show up to work. In addition, if they don't feel that they have a country or a future to fight for and they don't feel that they have a government that is reaching out to them in the way that they would like, they might not have the sort of impetus to fight in the way that we would expect. So I think it is, you know, surprising how quickly they fell and the, the degree to which they fell, but problems with the Iraqi security forces have plagued Iraq since the United States was there, you know, a decade ago. David, I know that there's been a lot of finger pointing over the last few weeks, but, but doesn't this really show that we still don't understand this part of the world and what makes it tick? We just don't get this part of the world. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far, but I do think this is a <clears throat> part of the world where uh, hatreds and rivalries go back, uh, you know, centuries, if not thousands of years. Uh, and we have to appreciate the, that we have to be humble about this part of the world. But that does not mean we can't uh, be on the side of people who are seeking greater opportunities in life. We can be on the side of empowering uh, women across the Middle East, for example. Uh, I don't think this is hopeless, Carol. I, do, I don't think we play our cards very well. We've had one administration that botched uh, the getting into Iraq, and now we've got another administration that seems to be botching trying to get out of Iraq. Uh, General, you know, I had a lot of conversations with my friends over the weekend about Iraq. They're very worried that there'll be American boots on the ground. Senator Rand Paul came out and said, you know what, would I send my son there for anything? No. I think people are really concerned about that. Will that ever happen? Is there a guarantee? Well, you can never say never, uh, but what I would suggest, Carol, is right now the president has said we are giving advisors to the country, and they have some very set 
rules and uh, requirements that they're going to live by while, while they're there. Uh, it's a difficult situation. It is going to become more and more complex. Uh, you know, during the, the heyday, we had 160,000 soldiers there, and really the, the, the best of our diplomatic corps was there. So these advisors are going to attempt to help. I think the push by the government to try and get more inclusion is the appropriate way to go. But we're going to see some very complex fighting uh, with a lot of different uh, elements of, of, of both sides. And it's going to be a, a really tough couple of weeks, months, perhaps years. Oh. Uh, it's going to continue to go on and we will likely see atrocities uh, as this goes on. I think sadly we've all grown used to seeing those things.